Going to dive right in and look at the Alabama spring game and how Ken DeBoer's new offense is going to look, the Crimson Tide. And of course, number one thing that everybody's looking for is just the passing game. What's it going to look like with Kalen DeBoer there? Obviously led the nation in passing with Washington, Michael Penix, all that stuff. So right here, just a simple concept there in a trips close set. So you got a tight end, you got three receivers over here. You get a corner route there by the tight end, flat route there by the back, under here by the number two receiver, a bit of a rub, and then probably a late square by number three, maybe a post over the top, kind of depending on what you're trying to do right there. But on this one, all you're looking at is who takes the running back. All right, getting a little bit of blitz right there. Easy pick up there for the old line, but who takes the running back? He's going to the flats. Outside linebacker takes it. So if it would have been a corner drop down on it, now you're high low on right here with that corner route. But since it was an outside linebacker, now I'm working to this under. So now it's going to be one to two. And right there, number two is open. They vacated with that blitz. A little bit of pocket movement, easy throw and catch right. Just one example showing how Alabama's have to progress through their passing game, getting guys open, people working routes, working space right here on that one. Another look here, same concept. Again, corner, flat, see who takes the back. And right here on this one, again, under, dig, see what that outside guy's doing right here on this one. But right here, again, linebacker's fine over top, corner's way out of there. You see how much depth he's got. This is a third and 26, so obviously, if you're gonna give up that underneath stuff, give it to the back right there. Nobody guard him. Take your number one option if you can. Right there, obviously, not trying to get 26, just trying to get a completion, get a little bit of extra space, maybe make a guy miss, maybe get a penalty. But right there, good job running it down, tackling, being sure right there. Not, not even high with that tackle. So great job getting on the ground. But again, you can see the concept that they're trying to run. There's number one. Of course, this was late in the game. Easy throwing catch. This is Austin Mack there at quarterback. Taking his first read right there, getting an easy completion. Same base concept here on this side. So you got a flat route, and it looks like he's going corner. But this is kind of a change up that they'll have. Once they kind of understand this route and start playing outside, now he's going to go there, and then he's going to curl up in that window. So again, you can see the back. He actually released between the guard and the tackle. Might be a check release getting out. Right there, trying to find a way with that wide defensive end. And as you're watching this route by this tight end, he sticks it to go to the corner. And, of course, this guy's playing off like he thinks it's that drive concept. Now he just curls it up, working that window. Pretty tight window. They fit it in there. Great throwing catch right there. Big play. Good change up there on that one. Of course, they're not really running the same thing that they would on that drive with that dig and this under coming to it because then you cover, the, cover up that curl. So right here just looks like they're kind of hanging out here, running a hitch. That could be an option right there, just depending on what you're trying to do with your read right here against the zone. Great job here by the quarterback playing strong. A little bit of pressure getting into his face. Able to throw and catch this into a pretty tight window right there to a tight end. Right here, just another progression concept they use quite a bit in this game. You're having a guy going to the corner. You got a snag right here and a flat route there from the back. And I think they're reading the back again. So you're looking one to the back. You got the snag and you got that corner over the top. You're just getting a triangle. Backside running double slants is what it looks like. And right here on this one, again, great job. Everybody's getting depth. There's nobody really guarding that back. This is on a second and 10. Get a completion. Make the defense tackle right here. So everybody's getting depth. Nobody's really worried about that back. Flip it down to them. And you can see with that backer getting that much width, if you hold on to it for just a second, might be able to get this number two option right there on that snag. It's just working that space that that outside linebacker vacates. But again, great decision right here. Not great job here at this guard spot. He's thinking he's gonna pass this off to this tackle and that tackle is nowhere to be found. He's absolutely dropped. And he's eyeballing this guy that actually got into pass coverage. Thinking this guard probably needs to stay on and just watch that guy as far as possible for whatever he tries to trade it off. But right there, quarterback, great job filling it. Get the ball out, get your completion. So a bust right there and pass protection, quarterback makes up for it. Able to get completion there on second and 10, getting about nine. So pretty good game right there on that snag. Another look, and this is another thing, Kevin DeBoer's offense. Of course, this is the young bunch, is Austin Mack right here, and they're running the same snag concept. They're just now doing it out of a tight end fullback spot. Now he's going to the flats. And again, this is second down, second and six. South side linebacker's kind of late to the flats. Take your flat. If there's an option to take it, that's what they get. Easy throw and catch. Get a first down right there. So again, Austin Mack taking his number one option. He's getting the ball to your back there in space. I thought this was a really good concept. Starting in two by two, motion him across. They stutter right there on vertical switch. Looks like they're going post vertical switch, and you have to check down he's able to get there with the six-man pro so really you're just looking one for the post so right there there's a little bit of a fake coming across one to the post you're trying to take corner and safety and you're trying to really stutter on this outside linebacker and right here this outside linebacker ends up running getting some depth this is just on the first and ten and right here on this one you see quarterback releases his hands pumping right there trying to get that guy to step up for just a little bit so he can throw the whole shot but he plays back great job here this is getting a little condensed that pocket's getting condensed on him Get your completion. It's a first and 10. Get the ball out there to your guy in space. See what he can do with it. And right there, that's what they do. So get it out there. Defense rallies up. Rallies up. Does a great job getting him out of bounds for about two yards. But right there, take your completion. Two yards is better than none. Don't just force the ball down the field, especially on a first down. Pretty good progression there by the quarterback. Next look here. Throw that a lot of people really thought was big time. He had a guy coming across right here. He's working across. He checks and he swings. Probably a dig right there for the number two. And right here on this one, hits the top of his drop, steps up, strides through the pocket, and great ball. This is pretty tight coverage. You got to keep him moving away from man to man. That's what happens. Throws him across and right there on that one. Great read 
here by the quarterback seeing that this deep third over here is vacated with this under he's going to hold these underneath coverage check swing there by the back holds his corner and then again just the pocket able to step through it and he can actually see everything there's a throwing lane right here that he can stride through pretty good throwing catch right there by alabama fit into that pretty tight window good coverage there by db same concept same quarterback and on this one you like for the quarterback just have a little bit more awareness and then this center is getting beat like a drum which i get and if I had to detack a massive human being like this running at me, I'd probably freeze up as well. But right here, you got to be an athlete. Just get this ball out. This guy's wide open, and everybody's getting a lot of depth. You should be able to see that just based off your progression, probably looking here, picking the corner, see what happens. Looks like they play zone. And then right there, if they're playing zone, you want to get to this side to see what what's happening to these linebackers. Where they're getting a lot of depth to high-low, almost like a shallow concept. Right there, everybody's getting depth. Slide just a little bit. Those off your back foot. He's wide open. Get your guy ball. Don't freeze up like they do. Right here, he sees that guy in his face, and he just freezes up. I uh, can't do that. Got to get the ball out by enough time to find a way to get your guy the football. All right, on this one, obviously, you're trying to get Milrow to work his progression, all that stuff. But this type of drive, I think, is a four verts concept. And he just steps through. Everything's a bit wonky. So right here, just take off. You're one of the most dynamic players in college football. One of the best players as well. And right there, this out runs a couple guys. He's going to get up to the first down. And right there, if he can progress anything close, anything close to how Michael Penix was at all, with the athleticism that he has, especially with his legs, to, to make people play him a little bit differently, it's going to be a really dynamic offense. Just having that guy at the helm is going to be a big issue for any team defensively. And right there shows it. I mean, obviously, if you put your hand on Milrow, you're probably going to get cut from the team. So right there, great job just buzzing by. Real quick, if you're a coach, I'd like to give you an offer right here. We've got a game planning manual. Go to CoachCaviar.com, and you put in April 30 at checkout, you get 30% off. This is the same process that we use to score 40-plus points a game. It gives you free templates, free videos showing you how we do it, and also send you a book that's very detailed and will show you exactly what you need to do to create a system that will not only score points but win games. I mean, semifinals every single year for the past five years and a state championship in 2019. So this method that we use is proven. I've only got about 80 left, and I'm not going to print any more this offseason. Probably going to have to wait till after the season to get some. So if you're a coach looking to get our game plan manual, get it now. And if you put in April 30 by the end of the month, and we still have copies, you can get 30% off. That's at CoachCaffey.com, and there will be a link in the description. So just look down below. It'll take you right to the spot to get the book. We're going to keep rolling on Alabama and how they looked in the spring game. And the first thing, obviously, everybody was looking for was that passing game. How is it going to look with Kalen DeBoer at the helm? Next thing is, hey, is the defense going to have the same standard as Nick Saban set? So right here on this one. We're going to look at it. It's just goal line first and goal. Downhill there in a basically a bunch set run and duo right at it. And right here on this one, they pass. Man, people are getting off. Of course, this double team, they're taking two for one. You love for him to at least hold his gap, but he's getting absolutely walked back. But still, it's two for one. Everybody else is filling in, doing their job, and they get him stoned. This is on first and goal. That's the other standard are looking for right there. Get that guy on the ground. Don't give up easy touchdown. Here's a look that is definitely not the standard, and I'm not sure what this guy's been told, or maybe this guy's been getting toasted down here on the goal line. I don't, really don't know. If you're just looking at what he sees, there's no reason for him just to be dropping. And this ball ends up getting to the front side C gap. So if he's looking through this tackle, he sees it's a run block. He should be filling C gap. If he's looking in the backfield, it's a straight downhill run. Quarterback eyes aren't on him. He should be filling C gap. Either way, there's no reason to just be walking outside the guy that's already manned up. And by the time he bounces, he's way too late to the party. He should be closing this space, even though he did look at the wrong thing. He should have already been right here in the C gap to get him on the ground. But with him being back and just backpedaling for whatever reason, now he's late to the party. He should still close space. But he's late to it and he's just hopping. And, I mean, this is physics at this point. You're going to get absolutely ran through at the goal line with no momentum. And that's what happens right there. So not a great job fitting C-Gap. Probably rolling his own here or either that or the coaches told him that this guy's got to get double teamed for whatever reason. But it doesn't look like it based on how that corner's playing. So bad read and then not very aggressive right there to fit into the box and gets ran through right at the goal line. Bad look there for an easy touchdown for the offense. Another look that's not just ideal. And on this one, again, DN, he's free. He, the quarterback's reading him. Great job getting down there playing both. But then he runs right through an arm tackle. Got to be stronger than that. Got to get him on the ground. Other thing, runs through one arm tackle by a DN. Now you've got this corner. He ends up getting tripped up by the safety who's not an athlete at all, just dives into his legs. And probably makes his corner look a lot worse than it, than it probably is, but he gets absolutely flat backed. My gosh, very rarely do you see Alabama DBs playing with that bad of a base and just getting absolutely flat backed. And then, you know, a couple guys rallied to it. He only gets nine yards, but broke two tackles right here and just absolutely threw a guy to the ground. Maybe this running back's the next Derrick Henry. I don't know, but that's not a great look for Alabama's defense. Definitely not the standard those guys have set over the years. So we saw a couple plays that weren't up to the standard. Here's one of a guy that's absolutely dominating here. And that is this linebacker to the backside. This guard's working up to him. Looks like they're slanting away, trying to two-gap, whatever. But he runs through this guard. This is on a fourth and one, no doubt. And they're just running inside zone. And he runs through the guard, who has a free path up to him with really nobody on him, which 
you definitely hope that there'd be at least a body that he'd have to run through or chip on. Uh, but right there, straight up to him. But this linebacker presses him off, holds his gap, and then also slams his running back. This is an unreal play. So that guy presses a guard and catches that running back and pushes him back. Now his guys are rallying to it. So that's a heck of a play there by that linebacker filling in, being physical, and playing with enough leverage there on the running back to get him stoned and push him back. That's, that's the standard that they're looking for from Alabama. No easy yards, no easy first downs. So that's a good play right there by that linebacker on a fourth and one. Now look here, I know this is a young guys. This is one of the boys' favorite plays. They're just running a truck up here to the top. They're going to pin and pull and flip it out there to them. And right there, these guys do a great job of rallying to it and playing hard. This is on a third and goal, so you know you got to get stopped and knowing what leverage you're playing with. Corner's got to set the edge. Maybe you can set that a little bit quicker, but it sets the edge. Maybe you can condense that, but just based on physics with the mass of that tight end, probably going to get pushed out. But hold that gap. Now everybody else, you got a guy running outside in. Everybody else is running inside out, and they stone that dude. And you see these dudes running, rallying to the football. That's what Alabama football is about, man. we got to get those guys on the ground. No easy yards, no touchdowns. That's what they do right there. Find a way, playing physical, push that guy back. This is the one play that I really was kind of perplexed about. you got a little bit of fly motion here, and then you're just running straight down. He looks like zone. And this fullback just kind of fills in to the B-gap. And so right here he's working across and he just works to the B-gap. And there's just a giant alley right here. For whatever reason, it looks like he's slanting to the front side. And then nobody can really feel that gap. This guy's not slanting hard enough. I would assume he's probably supposed to be slanting to that gap pretty hard. Hold that gap. Now he's got a guy in that gap. Now he can play over the top with these guys. But he sits on the outside gap and he's able to basically block him out. It works inside out, working up, and this is way too easy. So, so misfit right there, probably on that slant. Can't have guys just walking to the end zone right there before they get touched. And that's what happens on, on this look. Free touchdown, basically. I mean, guys just walked in untouched, didn't have to run through anybody from the two-yard line on second and goal early in the game. So we saw the passing game, then we saw the defense, and the defense was a little bit up and down. Passing game, obviously, you're going to have the some issues. I mean, a little progression looked decent at times. But right here, the third thing that I saw that was kind of interesting was just unforced errors, just guys not making the routine play and just not making easy throws. And right here, Austin Mack, I mean, they're running an arrow. Uh, if you had a junior high quarterback, you'd say you got to make this throw. This guy's supposed to be a stud. He's supposed to be the future for Alabama football. And we're bouncing an arrow, man. That's just not that's not, just not great. I mean, I know he's probably an absolute stud and probably an All-American on any high school football team. But right there, just bouncing it into the ground. Got to be able to make those plays in your sleep right there for Alabama. Another look here of guys just not making plays. And right here is this drive concept. You got this under route right here. And it is wide open. You see these linebackers are dropping on that corner. Not sure where he's going, so they're going to drop. When he's coming underneath, you got to dig in behind that guy. And that's about as open as you're going to get. And it absolutely misses. Misses high, trying to, trying to get up and over. And there's no protection issues either. I mean, this is basically 7-on-7 seven seven just with a couple guys standing in front of you. And he can't throw a catch. I mean, look at it. It's a guy that's settling into the window, and that is exactly 10 yards. And we airmail it. I mean, you got to come up with that play. you got to be able to make that throw all day, every day. Here's a little play that I'm sure Miller is a little bit familiar with. Just running mesh right here out of this fullback tight end set. And he ends up throwing this sit route into the middle of the field. And right here on this one, pretty good progression and pretty good patience. He's getting some run through here. And throws this should be caught. Now, of course, you can throw a better ball than this. You, if I was talking with a quarterback, I'd say, we got to put this on his chest. got to put it on his eyes or lower. Anything in the middle of the field is going to make him uncomfortable if it's high. But right there, if those are just a little bit high, but that guy's got to come down with it. I mean... Again, this is a routine play. A little bit of pressure, so it's not just the easiest thing in the world, but you got to be able to throw a guy that's just standing still 15 yards away from you, put it right on his face mask, and then, of course, if the ball's not perfect, you got to be an athlete. Make a play right there. Again, leaving plays on the field for those skilled guys for Alabama. Here's a look of Milrow making a pretty good throw. I mean, it, this is a long throw from the far hash outside the numbers on a, on a comeback, and this dude short arms it. I mean, look at what he's doing right here with his hands. He's not extending as far as he can. He's trying to catch it right in front of his face mask as he's picking his eyes up. So right there, again, leaving a play on the field. It's, it's an easy throw and catch. The guy's ripping it out there to you on a third and nine. And it's for a first down. you got to come down with this and make a play. And right there, I guess moment's too big for our guy. I mean, number 23 wide receiver, no wonder. But, I mean, you've got to come down with that ball when, when the quarterback puts it on you on a third and nine. Basically the same concept, right? You're getting verticals on the outside, and there's a comeback. And great read here by the quarterback. I mean, you got off corners. Let's take it. It's a third and 18. We're not really going to force this thing way too far down the field, especially when you get into field goal range on this. If we're up close to the 30, maybe we'll get a chance to go for it. You know, get about half of it. And right there, rips it to him. Again, I mean, hands aren't even close to tight enough. I mean, you, you, are you trying to catch the middle of the football? You got to tell him, hey, we're catching the front of the football. Get your thumbs together. And right there, it goes right through his hands. 
doesn't even see it through his hands. Obviously, these are big-time guys, and they, they can come down with this. It's just a lack of focus right there by those receivers in a couple of key spots. Next thing we're going to look at is just how they're going to utilize some runs and what they're going to do. Obviously, he didn't run Penix a lot, but they did run Power Reed late in the season, especially in the last championship game. They ran a couple times for big plays, and that's what they ran in the spring game here with Milro. And on this one, again, it's just power. These guys are going to double-team the backside. He's pulling from the front side. You're going to read that guy. Leading out there with two-back set. He squeezes. They hand the ball. They get on the edge. He ends up coming down to crack the safety. They roll down. Now he's rolling out there for the corner. And with that guy squeezing, they get the edge really easily. Great block here by the receiver. Off back running up there to lead. Creating a big play right there on the power read. And, of course, I'm sure that'll be one way that they're able to get Milro into the run game and get people to hesitate just a little bit as far as the run game where he can be dynamic there as well. No look at power read. This time, obviously, not Milro in there. And they're doing it to the bunch set is what it looks like. And quarterback gets a pull read. He's reading this cat right here, and he's widening out. So now we got Ty Simpson running power right here downhill. That's what you're looking at. And double team, everybody's running over the top because they really didn't, they really didn't think Ty Simpson was going to run the football. But that's what he gets right here. And he's stumbling. He's, he's you know, sees somebody in front of him, so he just absolutely stops and freezes, uh, which he's known to do, I guess, in this game. Kind of showed it a couple times. But you just got to run, man. There ain't no reason to stop. I mean, if you stop, you're going to get absolutely obliterated. So go ahead and run. That guy's probably going to obliterate you either way, but then you at least got a little momentum you can get down. So, again, power read, even running with Ty Simpson. So it's one of those things they're probably going to run quite a bit of this next year. Last time seeing power read, and I like this look here. They started in trips closed, motion him back. They're able to lead right here. Again, reading this defensive end, tight end is able to arc out there wide. He squeezes a little bit with that down block, and with that jet motion with that guy going pretty quickly, good hand read. He's going to kick the corner. Tight end had arced up to the safety to roll down. There's a lead kick. Again, getting in space. One of the bigger plays that they had. Again, they had a couple big plays there on the power read. One with Milrow in, and then one right here with Austin Mack in. Again, getting the ball on the edge, using the defensive rules against them when they squeeze on that power or down block. Now you can get the edge. And they cracked the safety that was rolling down to the alley. Kicked the corner. Made a big play there for Alabama. So look for that with their run game this next year with Jalen Milrow. So right there, just thinking about the Alabama spring game, saw the passing game. I mean, it's still a work in progress. They had some good things as far as their progression. They got to just continue to get better at that and get more comfortable. And they'll add more things in there. They're very, very vanilla, just like everybody is in the spring, especially in the spring game. Second thing was the defense, the standards. They're going to be the same as it was with, with Nick Saban. There were some, some ups and downs, especially early. There's some missed tackles. Uh, not great defense there on the goal line. Looked like a missed assignment. They could have made it a little more difficult on a run, but... I mean, the defense was solid throughout, but had some hiccups right there with tackling and some stuff, especially short yardage goal line here. Third thing is that the receivers and skill guys just left plays out there on the field. They have a lot better showing through the season of just being consistent, making the easy plays, because there aren't just going to be a ton of easy plays out there in the SEC. they got to find a way when they do have space to come down with the football, and Miller's got to come way to find a way to throw catchable footballs. And that, that's another thing we talk about, the great quarterback, they throw catchable footballs. And sometimes his ball, especially intermediate, doesn't look that catchable. It looks kind of wonky and is not the most accurate. A lot of those receivers would say, yeah, i got to come down with that, and they do. But Miller can also help him as well, making a little more catchable ball. And the last thing was just how are they going to utilize the run game and how are they going to utilize Miller's legs other than the scramble. And they used a little bit of power read right there, showing they're going to run that like they did late in the year with Penix in the championship game. So definitely looking forward to it. I mean, the boys got a lot of work to do, and I'm sure they're going to have a really active time in the portal, maybe looking for some offensive skill guys to come in that they think could make some plays. And, of course, probably just looking for good players, man. Uh, you got to find some good defensive linemen. got to find some good secondary players. And know they lost a lot, especially in the secondary. got to find some guys there as well. So let us know what you thought about the spring game, where, where we kind of missed, what we didn't see. But I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you guys again in the next video.